It's Friday, February the 17th, 2017, and this is your Barbados Today afternoon update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. We begin with news that Governor of the Central Bank of Barbados, Dr. Delisle Worrell, will know today if he will keep his job. High Court Judge Justice Randall Worrell is handing down his ruling in the case where he had earlier granted a temporary injunction restraining Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair from firing the bank governor. So today's judgment should either lift or retain that injunction. Meanwhile, President of the Clement Payne movement, David Cominshaw, says Barbados not only needs a new central bank governor, but a new government. In a statement issued today, Cominshaw also called for St. Clair to be dismissed by Prime Minister Frandil Stewart. He is of the view that one cannot separate the performance and record of Governor Worrell from that of Minister St. Clair. Opposition MP for the city, Jeffrey Bostick, is charging the government with neglecting the children of his constituency. Bostick is therefore demanding priority attention be given to providing better conditions for the young people in Bridgetown. He was last night addressing a Craftsman of Our Fate Award ceremony for city dwellers in the play court of London-born Towers. And that interest has to do with the fact that this is one of the areas in the city of Bridgetown where children do not have a place where they can gather as children, where they could be wholesome activities designed for children. They have to be on the streets because there's nowhere else to go. And I see exactly the challenges that the little children in this area face. I even fight with tooth and nail, and nail on your behalf that whatever development takes place in this city of Bridgetown during my tour of duty, whether it's the higher or anything else, and they do not give some assistance to the communities and the residents of the city of Bridgetown, I am going to keep noise all day. At that same event, opposition leader Mia Motley condemned the Friendly Stewart administration for pursuing their scale construction projects in the city while ignoring housing challenges of nearby residents. Too often our politics is consumed by building edifices and buildings that are totally disconnected from real people. And that's why when we walk through the town, Two Sundays ago, after St. Ambrose, people said to us, how can you build a Hyatt Cross there and don't deal with the people who live in Wellington Street or San Domingo Alley? How can you do it? And the people in the Orleans were no different than in Pickwick Gap in expressing their concern how can the government be talking about building and expanding a fancy port, but you still got conditions in New Orleans where you can't, even, people can't even get proper foundation because of how you dig and when you reach water and how you secure the house? How can you do it? In sport, Shai Ho broke a 25-year-old record as Barbados Pride brushed aside a jaded Leeward Islands Hurricanes by 110 runs to set up a, a rematch with Jamaica Scorpions in tomorrow's final of the Regional Super 50. In the second day-night semi-final at Coolidge Cricket Ground in Antigua yesterday, tournament favourites Pride rattled up 314 for 7 off their 50 overs with the right-handed Hope gathering a career best of 125 from 108 deliveries. Opener Craig Brathwaite weighed in with 54. Captain Jason Holder stroked a breezy 26 ball on beating 42, while Roston Chase chipped in with 31 and big-hitting all-rounder Carlos Brathwaite 27. There's regional and international news after this short break. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, 220. Who? For where? That's the best day news. I don't read about that from Barbados today since last night. That can only car do. 220, who? The Barbados Today news you can trust. 
It's the celebration of agriculture, 50 years and beyond. Come and experience this year's AgroFest exhibition at the historic Queen's Park on February 24th to 26th. Box offices, Barbados Agricultural Society, Roberts Manufacturing Feed Store, Clear Vision Optical, Massey Stores Barbados Limited, Worthing, Sunset Crest, Oystins, and Sky Mall. Massey Stores Home, Sheraton and Pierhead, Cave Shepherd Broad Street, Waterworld Pet Shop, Jordan's Complex, Spikestown, Ticket Center, Massey Supercenter Warrings. Be there. We are back with news from the region now. The CARICOM Heads of Government Conference has opened in Guyana with a strong call from current chairman and president of Guyana, David Granger, for full implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy. We face threats that include dampened demand for our goods and services and distortions in our financial sectors caused by the risking by international banks. The CSME has the potential to enhance private sector growth and competitiveness by providing access to a larger pool of resources, facilitating the movement of human capital, catalyzing the establishment of regional businesses and encouraging the free movement of goods. The CSME must not be allowed to become a victim of equivocation and procrastination. And Secretary General of the CARICOM, Ambassador Erin Laroc, expressed dissatisfaction that the region's tardiness was hindering social and economic progress. We are not delivering results as fast as we should in a number of areas. Our crime and security agenda is affected by this. Crime and security is not just a national issue, but a regional one. The critical regional legal instruments that we are awaiting finalization would assist in the battle at the national level. The time is past due for the outstanding matters to be concluded with a degree of urgency. And finally, on the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump's choice for a national security advisor has turned down the job offer. Retired Vice Admiral Robert Howard was widely tipped for the post after Trump fired Michael Flynn on Monday. The White House still reeling after U.S. President Donald Trump fired his national security advisor after just 28 days on the job, dealt another blow when the man Trump wanted to take the role told him, thanks, but no thanks. Trump on Thursday saying the decision to dismiss former General Michael Flynn was made easier because he had a strong replacement in mind. And I have somebody that I think will be outstanding for the position. And that also helps, I think, in the making of my decision. Retired Vice Admiral Robert Harward turning down the offer later that day. Harward is a former Navy SEAL with over 40 years of military experience and is currently a top executive at aerospace and arms manufacturer Lockheed Martin. But sources telling Reuters Harward wanted the freedom to appoint his own team to help him with the job. That put him at odds with Trump. A White House official saying Harward declined because of family and financial considerations. And that's news and sports. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.